welcome everyone to Epic Encounters. I hope you enjoy this week's message. I'm confident that the message from this series will meet you exactly where you are. Stay tuned for an epic journey. And I'm so happy to introduce my pastor, my father in the gospel. That's none other than the apostle himself, Bishop Joel David Trout. Thank you, Pastor Shante Cephas. And what an honor it is to be here with Double E, Epic Encounters, on this Father's Day 2020. I appreciate the opportunity to, to be a father. Naturally, thank God that I'm a father and also spiritually, and to be with one of my spiritual sons here today, this great ministry. But I'm also here today at a very unique time in our society. And so, as you've seen, everything is different. We've, we've turned everything upside down and Father's Day 2020 will not be any less. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm probably committing a ministerial misdemeanor because quite frankly, coming to Father's Day every year and especially seeking to find the right word for fathers on Father's Day is becoming more and more tedious. Not because I don't love my father who I honor greatly and, and the concept and the idea of fatherhood needs to be reinforced. But I guess as a minister, I'm, I'm confessing, uh, I'm weary of this fact, and it's, and it's still the same thing. Every, every year, we come and we want to hear something good about fathers. Sometimes there's those that want us to spank fathers and reprimand them for not being good fathers. And then there's others to, to promote and push fatherhood. But, but I, I'm struck with this fact on Father's Day that still in, in my group, in the African-American culture, since everybody's doing identity politics, this persistent, stubborn fact remains that 70% of the children born in the African-American family, 70% coming to a home without a father. And when you look around at all the others compared to us, it's disheartening. And yet here we are again, challenged as people expect the preacher, you got to say the word that's, that's going to change and reverse that or or pat on the back for the fathers that are doing it. And yes, I'm here to encourage you. I'm very proud and glad to be a father. But what occurred to me is that when we deal directly just with fatherhood, we're trimming at the edges. And, and today I don't want to trim at the edges. I want to get to the center of the issue. The center of the issue is manhood. You see, you can't make it to fatherhood without going through manhood. So perhaps we've been focusing on the wrong thing and we have focused on, we've challenged, we've preached, we've cajoled, we've lifted, we've tried programs to increase the awareness of the need of fathers and still the numbers are still there stubborn as they are 70 percent in this particular culture are born to a home without a father maybe i'm asking too much on one message to change that tide and maybe perhaps that's part of my frustration at approaching this because no pithy cotton candy theme is going to change something that is deep-seated in a culture 
So what do we need to attack here? Something that transcends culture. And that is nature. And we attack it from this perspective. Manhood. You see, if I can diminish manhood, I can do damage to fatherhood. I don't need consensus. I don't need you to raise your hands. You know that manhood is under attack today. Do we, do we have to name all the ways in which daily manhood is attacked? Thanks to social media, we're presented with pictures of men with dresses on, skirts, and made to accept the beauty of the contradiction. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, manhood being attacked. No more distinction about men anymore. <laughs> when, when one of our most famous celebrities exclaims and touts how excited she is to introduce the first man to have a baby in America. It strains at credulity. Because when I look at the person, you might have a mustache and you might have a baby bump and you might have on jeans and even a beard. But use a woman. But see, that's the subtle way in which manhood is attacked. And I'm not attacking people. I'm trying to save the last vestige of the binary concept of humanity. The binary concept of humanity is simply boy, girl, man, woman. But it's tragic that you'll be called into question for daring to say that. You see, we have this thing called cancel culture, which the mob will gather together and cancel your voice, will dox you and find ways to shut your mouth. If you dare say the king has no clothes on and to dare say, shh, that there's a difference between men and women. You've heard of Harry Potter? Yeah. Well, J.K. Rowling, the writer of Harry Potter, is being vilified by her community that once loved her because she dared to say, don't, catch yourself, she dared to say that there, there is a difference between men and women. Oh! <gasps> Now they're coming against one of their own because manhood is being diminished. And if you diminish manhood, you certainly take out fatherhood. And so today, I just want to talk to you for a few moments. We're, we're going to connect fatherhood in this. I love you dads that are in there fighting a good fight holding it down for your babies, for your lady, for your children, your grandchildren, showing up on the job every day. Some of you perhaps have visitation rights, but you make sure you stay on your visitation. You got joint custody. You're still trying to make it happen. Big daps to you. Keep, keep doing it, man. But I want to address what is really at the core of fatherhood, and that's manhood. You need a subject. My subject today is one I've preached before. I'll do it again, 2020 style, menopause or man on pause. Man on pause. Yes, we also deal with menopause. It's 
stay with me just for a few moments due to its vital role in shaping society, securing families and building young boys. The linchpin of fatherhood is manhood, which is very much under attack. Let me quote one of the prophets of the day whose words still live even though he is no longer with us. Tupac said, had he had a father in his life, he said I would have, he said I would have been more disciplined. I would have had more confidence. And, and Tupac said, dads matter. Now, just for that statement, Tupac would be canceled today because it doesn't jive with political correctness. Yes, they would have tried to cancel Tupac because he dared to say that dads matter. And it's sad we got to tiptoe very gently so that we don't offend somebody's sensibility and make sure we don't say the obvious that it takes a man to be a father. No, conventional wisdom says we can replace you with a surrogate and fill the role. And so we wonder why perhaps in one particular subset of the culture, there's such a disdain for discipline in making sure that our kids get a chance. In a lot of ways, it's not just outside forces, it's the internal forces that keep us down. We're facing the, the shrinking man, the lack of fathers. And then we get images fed to us daily to diminish that role. And so, as Paul says, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. That word devices is methodologies. We're not ignorant of the methods of Satan. As the years go by, as cultures change, it gets more subtle, but it's still a methodology at diminishing, marginalizing men. And in so doing, I can rob the culture of the presence of a father. Tupac no less said, I, I wish I had a dad because dads matter. Right. My God. And so the methodology now that we're facing is to diminish men. And perhaps maybe I'm just a voice in the wilderness crying out. Who knows whether it'll affect anybody. But I guess I need to say something so that I don't get jaded and cynical in my own mind because it's, it's quite possible because of pressure and people having to shut their mouth or being doxxed or being shut up or being shamed or getting ad hominem attacks that, that, that you can't say that fathers are vital and needed. The great society plan in the 60s by LBJ effectually, effectually took the man out of the home because you can't get the check if a guy lives in the house. And so many boys grew up with the government as they daddy. The government cheese substituted for a ride in the car with daddy. A tub, a, a tub of government cardboard peanut butter substituted for papa. I, I seen them. We had them. Orange, green, red, food stamps. The Great Society plan was we're, we're going to we're going to throw money at this problem, but the man can't be there. And so here we have another way of enslaving the fathers <laughs> so that he can't raise his children. 
You see, we've lost a generation. We've actually lost a generation through eugenics that is dressed up to, to control the, the number of minorities that grow in our society. I know this might be a little bit much for your Sunday, but here we are. Father's Day 2020. Everything else is upside down. We might as well turn it upside down. So the images that we are given say to us that men don't matter. And especially men that become fathers. It's sad today, but we always have to restate the obvious. That's when you know that you're in some kind of dystopian society. When we have to restate the things that are obvious. And then... You get canceled if you state what is obvious. So the scriptures, when, when they address men or man, man then became a metaphor in scripture just to reinforce how powerful and necessary men are. Reminds me, number one, of 2 Samuel, the 10th chapter, when the children of Israel were going to battle against Ammon, David had to encourage the troops. And he said these words in 2 Samuel chapter 12 and 11. He says, if the Syrians, this is strategic battle warfare tactics, he said, if the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will come and help thee. That's, that's right there a prescription for building up men today. If what you're dealing with is too much for you, brother, I got you. And if, and if I get overwhelmed, can you come and help a brother? My God. Watch what David says. Be of good courage and let us play the men for our people and for the cities of our God. And the Lord do that which seemeth him good. So here we see the usage of the term men. He says, let's play the part of the men. Men is used as a metaphor for courage. And this is the way God sees men, men are to exhibit and display courage to the point that David said, all of you, let's play the part of the men for the people. My God, we got enemies over here and over there. Let's be the men. You see, you can't say that today because then you're saying, well, then you're saying that Women can't be and play that part. There's a distinct role that God made for men. And that was a, a role of courage. Courage don't mean you don't have fear. Courage means you say your prayers and you go on anyway. We need courage from our men. And a man with courage is a man that is able to be courageous enough to follow through on fatherhood. It takes courage. Let me tell you something. It takes courage to be a father today. My God. When everything's coming at you, when your kids go to school and they get a diminished image of daddy, it takes courage to father those kids. My God. When your daughter has to come home and say, where there's boys identifying as girls who want to be on the track team against me. Come on and wake up, people. Jesus. It takes courage for that father to go down and say, my daughter is a girl. She's on the girl's track team. Help me, God. It takes courage. David said, let's play the part of the men. So the Bible uses men as a metaphor for courage. Fathers, it takes courage. Man, things didn't turn out the way you wanted them to. That's all right. It still takes courage. Show up. That's my boy. That's my girl. 
I'm going to do everything I can to take care of my responsibility. It just takes courage, that's all. Mama might not want you, but those are my kids. I'm not related to their mama, I'm related to them kids. Those kids have my blood, so it takes courage. The Bible equates manhood with courage. Another scripture that comes to mind is found in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel, the 22nd chapter, verse number 30. Here's what Ezekiel says. He says, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Men on poles, where are the men? Get off of poles. He says, I look for a man. Once again, now the Bible's using man as a metaphor for somebody who stands in the gap, who dares to make a difference, who dares to repair things. Oh, help me, God. The Bible uses man as a metaphor. I sought a man among them that should make up the hedge, stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. You see how important manhood is? A man can stand in the gap and change a generation. Lord, help me right now. If Tupac had a dad that he longed for, history would have been changed. My God, those looters that are busting up businesses in black neighborhoods. I saw a graphic picture of a young looter who had his dad out there grabbing him. He must have caught him on the TV, breaking up someone else's business, grabbing him and taking him home. My God. And let me just add this. There's people saying, well, Destroying businesses is all right because Jesus did it when he turned over the tables. Let me help you get this straight. Jesus was turning over tables in his own house. He said, my house should be called the house of prayer for all people. It was his own house he turned tables over, not in somebody else's house. Jesus wasn't turning over tables across the street. He said, this is my house. <laughs> Going to use Jesus, conflate him with looters? Loot your own house. Jesus looted his own house. Read the scripture. My house shall be called. A house of prayer for all people. My God. If you've never owned a business, been a man that owned a business, you'll never understand the heart that it takes, the courage it takes to get out there and do it on your own and employ other people and then to have it go up in smoke for someone to make a point. Oh, you made your point. You made it hard for a brother to do his business. Now I'm going to have to fire you because I can't employ you now. I know I'm off subject. Fathers make up the difference. Men make up the difference. The word says God was looking for a man, but the man was on pause, waiting, waiting. You don't need to wait. You know one sign of manhood is initiative. A father who's really a father will take initiative. If it's three jobs, it's three jobs. But I got to make sure my baby got food. My God, God said, I'm looking for someone that will stand in the gap. Make up the difference. <laughs> Repair the wall. My God, that's a real father. My God will stand in the gap. Speak up for his child. Go to the principal. My God, stand in the gap. Be a coach on a team in the, in the hood. When the kids can't afford, afford uniforms, work another job so I can buy those kids uniforms. I'm standing in a gap for somebody else's child. Y'all didn't catch that. That's a man, a father standing in the gap, 
boy don't have a daddy. Lord, help me. Help me, Jesus. I've had little kids. My God, just because I treated them nice. My God, I say, are you my daddy? Yes, just because they got nice treatment from a man. So God said, I'm looking for a man who will stand in the gap, intercede, and repair the wall. My God. And they said, I looked and I couldn't find one. My God. What's he doing? Painting his nails somewhere. Lord, help me right now. Jesus. He said, I'm looking for a man. So the Bible uses man as a metaphor for a gap dweller. Man in the gap. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And finally, Isaiah 66 and verse number two. Speaking of men on pause, when the Bible speaks of men he uses that term man interchangeably to, de to describe something greater. And Isaiah does this in Isaiah 66 and says in verse one, thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you built unto me? And where's the place of my rest? For all those things hath my hand made. And all these things have been, saith the Lord, but to this man I will look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. So he uses man as a metaphor for a man that's humble. My God. He uses man. I will look to this man. What is he using it for? That's a metaphor for somebody who's poor and contrite in spirit, not egotistical and maniacal, self-aggrandizing, who trembles at his word. A man that can still be moved by the scripture. Sisters, you want a real man? Find your man that's moved by the word. My God, that man can always be tugged by God. Even when he gets out of line, eventually their word will move him back in. My God, he might not have red bottoms. He might not have curly hair or dimples. My God, but God said, I'm going to look to that man. The man that humbles himself under my mind and who trembles at my word. And so we see God is using in the scriptures Men as a metaphor for something greater. It shows you how God views manhood. And without manhood, there is no fatherhood. And so as we come to this penultimate moment right now in the midst of pandemic and pandemonium. I'm reminded of the scripture in Malachi. Malachi, as we we end the the Old Testamental period and going to that 400 intertestamental period. He closes out the Old Testament with these words. How appropriate in Malachi 4 and 5. Behold, speaking of the day of the Lord, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. There seems to be something conditional here that before the great day of the Lord, God is going to correct things on the margin. He's going to justify the lines that are out of line. And I'm going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. He says, Elijah is going to bring this about. I'm going to send you Elijah. Isn't it significant that when Elijah was taken away in a chariot of fire, his son in the gospel, I could say, Elisha cried out, my father, my father, 
my God. Elijah didn't birth him, but Elisha said, you're my father. He cried out for his father. And it's going to be Elijah who comes back and turns the hearts of the fathers to the children. My God. And then God says, I'll smite the earth with a curse. My God, fathers are going to be turned towards their children. They're not going to opt for just pleasure and, 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 and no strain and struggle. But I realize to be a father means I got to do without sometimes. And I'm not going to be able to hang with the boys because I got these children. He's going to turn their hearts to the children. And then he says, I'll smite the earth with a curse. Then, you know why? We're in grace right now. God's given us time, fathers. My God, you, you, you know he's out there. Call. My God. We got Google now. You can find that child. Hug those children that are at the home a little tighter. I know it's awkward and it's hard to put things into words that you're thinking, but they'll never forget you were there. He, he was there. I just, I just want to make sure that they never grow up thinking that the father wasn't there. Manhood breeds fatherhood. Don't be on pause. These are things men do. And, and let's just tell the truth. We're not always courageous. We're not always brave. But a sign of manhood is the ability to just do it anyway. We have a generation that grew up with this motto. Just do it. Nike. We have a generation that grew up with that in their ear constantly. So... Broke, busted, lost my job, car's not running. But guess what? Just be there. Because the presence cannot be duplicated by anybody else. Because you're, you're the father. You are, as Maury said, the father. You know how do you get off a of pause? You know what? I, I, I have a, a Roku remote at home. And on the Roku, Roku's different, a little smaller, not many knobs and buttons at all. So things have to double. And the same button that I used to play is the same button that I use for pause. So, in the same way that you stopped, <laughs> the same way as you get back on, on the field, you paused, guess what? Hit play. Watch this. You see the connection in the scripture? David said, play the part of the men. Men, just get off a pause and press play. Play the part. My daddy wasn't there for me, but I'm going to play the part. What would I have wanted a dad to be? I'm going to play the part. And it's amazing how if you play the part, the effect will still bless your child. And guess what? We're all playing the part. God bless you. We love you. Come on and give your heart to the Lord. This is a good ministry to start with. I don't know when we'll all be getting back together, but you want to connect to Epic Encounters. And have just what its name says. Life-changing encounter. A life-changing encounter with the Lord Jesus. Lord, I speak life over every man listening. From manhood to fatherhood. To stir his heart. To raise him up. Give him courage. To step out and play the part. Restore families restore children to their fathers who've lost contact I'm just speaking that for someone this week that through another party you're going to be connected to your father 
in the name of Jesus. I want you to notify this, this church, Pastor Shante, when that happens. I speak reunification right now in the name of Jesus. Turn the heart of the Father to the children. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. So appreciative. We're so appreciative for that word. Again, enjoy your Father's Day. Enjoy your time with your Father. And for those that are missing their Father right now, we salute and we celebrate, but we also, we also pray our prayers upon you because we know that this is a hard time to get through for you. So we're here for you as well. Just like the preacher said, we want you to contact us at myepicencounter at gmail. We want to partner with you. And again, we would ask that you would allow us to invite you into our tribe. We look forward to meeting you. We look forward to worshiping with you on Sunday, June the 28th at 2 p.m. at 810 Buena Vista Way, Chula Vista, California. 91910. For those that didn't get a chance to give earlier, we also want to extend this opportunity to you for you to be a blessing right now. You can give by four different ways. You can give through PayPal, you can give through Cash App, you can give through Givelify, or you can give through our own Epic Encounters app, which is available in the Apple Store and in the Google Play Store. God bless you. Happy Father's Day to you and yours, and we'll be praying for you.